today welcome back for another mexico piece by piece and this time we're going to the north of the country with ta 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 chihuahua ta 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 chihuahua ta 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 chihuahua hey chihuahua chihuahua i'm pretty sure you have heard the word before chihuahua at least referring to these tiny little dogs very famous mexican dog breed welcome back to the tequila princess channel so chihuahua is located in the northern part of mexico and it is the biggest state in the whole country it's the 12th more populated and the climate is generally hot in some places is very extreme but we're talking about a very dry climate although it's semi-humid in some areas and the temperatures are usually very extreme in some places like for example batopilas going to the 50 celsius degrees and in other areas going low enough for it to actually snow crazy isn't it <laughs> Today we will start with the capital city of the state, sharing its name with the state, Chihuahua. It's a beautiful city, especially downtown. You can walk around and see very old and beautiful buildings. There is this very particular park where you have a beautiful quarry arch that decorates the entrance, Parque Lerdo de Tejada. It's a beautiful place to go take a stroll, maybe with your partner or some friends. There are also many museums in the city, like for example, the Museum of the Sacred Art, the Museum of the Mammut, the Museum Casa Chihuahua, Casa Museo de las Artesanías, or the Museum of the Mexican Revolution, also known as Casa Villa, referring to the general Pancho Villa. You might have heard of him. He was originally from another state, so we will be talking more about him when we reach Durango. But he lived many years and he actually died in Chihuahua, so we have his former home that is now serving as a beautiful museum. Just 15 minutes away from downtown, you will find a natural beauty, Grutas Nombre de Dios, the name of God Caves, which is a beautiful place where you can take a two-hour tour to admire the different formations from the stalactites and the stalagmites. And we also have the national park, Cumbres de Majalca, where you will find over 4,700 hectares of desertic beauty. Mountains, a little bit of vegetation, but especially a lot of beautiful and peculiar rocks. Ideal for mountain biking, trekking, or just hiking. If you plan to visit the city in between August and October, check on the government's website to see if you can catch the Festival Internacional de Chihuahua, the International Chihuahua Fest, which is a full month, 30 days of all sorts of cultural exchange many times participating up to nine different countries with painting, photograph, poetry, concerts, and folkloric and classic dance. It's an incredible way of submerging yourself in culture while enjoying of a beautiful city. Next, we're going to be talking about Pueblos Mágicos. You know, the government's program where a few hand-picked little towns that represent the Mexican culture the best receive a little extra budget so that they can preserve and promote the local culture. Chihuahua has three Pueblos Mágicos, Casas Grandes, Cri, and Batopilas. We're going to be starting with Casas Grandes, also known as Paquimé. The place receives the name of the original culture that used to live there, the culture Paquimé, which is also believed to have been the most advanced of North America. By the time that the Spanish arrived, they had a huge city that was already abandoned, but with constructions of several levels, thing that is not very common in pre-Hispanic buildings. But in this case, they found buildings that were up to seven levels high, and they also had drainage and heating systems. It's just impressive. You can visit the archaeological site that has approximately 50 hectares, although most of it is still unexplored. And right next to it, make sure to visit Museo de las Culturas del Norte, the Northern Cultures Museum, where you can find many of the pieces that were originally found inside of Paquimé, particularly pots and vases, with decorative patterns that you might find similar to the Apache culture, 
That's because Paquimé had a huge influence in a big area that included the whole state of Chihuahua and some parts of the south of U.S. For example, in Utah, Colorado, and Arizona. So the style of decoration might be a little bit similar, but if you pay attention, you will realize that it's very particular of the place. Not so far from the archaeological site, you will find the little town of Mata Ortiz, where you will find a huge production of ceramic pieces of this particular art. The whole population is dedicated to produce these beautiful pieces. And lastly, make sure to visit Cueva de la Olla, the pod cave. You will arrive to a valley in between mountains where you will find a lot of caves, many of them with constructions inside. The main attraction of the place is, of course, where you can find a 3.5 meters tall construction that looks like a pot. And it was used for storing grain. It was actually a very clever way of living because this area can turn very hot or very cold during the winter. So inside of the caves, they could control the temperature much better. That combined with their very advanced engineering systems, it made perfect homes. The next two towns are kind of connected in a way. You will see what I mean in a minute. Krill and Batopilas. You can arrive to both of them via train. Here in Mexico, we have one very famous touristic train called El Chepe. It goes, depending on the weather, the rail conditions, and the season, and many other factors, it can go from Chihuahua all the way to Sinaloa, Los Mochis. With the ticket that you buy for the train, you can hop up and off of the train as many times as you want with the same ticket. Also, for as long as you want. So you can stop by in one place, let's say Creed, spend the night and hop on the train again the next day. But if you were to take the train non-stop from beginning to end, you will have 15 hours of beautiful landscapes, woods, mountains, hollows, rivers, all sorts of beautiful places. It took over 60 years to finish this huge project that goes through the Sierra Tarahumara. You will find 37 bridges and 86 tunnels. As far as I know, five days is ideal for fully enjoying the Chepes route through the Barrancas del Cobre, the Copper Canyon, which is one of the biggest and deepest canyons in the world. Just for you to get an idea, the Great Canyon in U.S. is four times smaller than Barrancas del Cobre. There are over 60,000 kilometers of beautiful nature in this canyon. If you go to the adventure park of the same name, Barrancas del Cobre, you will get the chance of sliding through the highest zip line in the whole country. You can also practice climbing, mountain biking, trekking, and also enjoy the view in one of the many hanging bridges. Surrounding Creel, you will find two valleys that are super fun to go and visit. El Valle de los Monjes, the Monk's Valley, it's very particular because of these tall, slim rock formations that resemble a monk standing in prayer. Or El Valle de los Hongos y las Ranas, the Frogs and Mushrooms Valley, where the wind has created these very whimsical figures that resemble mushrooms and frogs. Creel is a beautiful small town with a lot of culture present in every corner. And finally from Creel, I want to tell you about the Museum of the Tarahumara Culture, which is a place where you will learn about the local indigenous culture, also known as Raramuri, which means the light feet. There at the museum, you will have the chance of knowing a little bit more about this culture, but I will tell you a little bit more about them in the next town, Batopilas. To get there, you will have to get off the train, El Chepe, in the station, Bauichivo. From there, you will have to go down because the town is located exactly at the bottom of the canyon, which is known in history because of its mines. You see, I have a little conflict here because I was reading that this town, Batopilas, was the second place to get electric light right after Mexico City. But if you remember in the Baja California video, I told you that Santa Rosalia was the second place to get electric light. So now I'm confused <laughs> because the information from both places claim the same. So I tried to do a little bit more digging and I believe it was Batopilas. So sorry for the confusion.
sometimes that happens. Back in the day when the mines were producing a lot of silver, the mule drivers were in charge of, of taking it from the Topilas to the city of Chihuahua. That, back in the day, was a five-day journey at horseback while the mules were carrying all these tons of silver and materials from the mines to the Chihuahua's bank. Nowadays, we have La Ruta de la Plata, which is a modern recreation. Of course, we are not carrying silver this time, but they recreate the same route that they followed back in the day in the same conditions, meaning that they are dressed as they were, carrying what they were carrying, using horses and mules to go from Batopilas to Chihuahua. It's a 15-day journey these days, but because they like to enjoy the view and chat with your fellow mule drivers, <laughs> camping at night, cooking your own meals, it's a different experience. Something that for sure is super appealing, although there are not many women doing it right now, but there are some very brave ones, I think. And finally, I want to tell you about the Raramuri experiences, which is a better way of knowing the Tarahumara culture of the region. You can hire these experiences for a few hours or even for a few days, so you actually get to live and sleep with them in the sierra, in the mountains. They will teach you how they move around, always running with their very light feet, cooking their meals, how they do their clothing, how they do the art crafts that they sell everywhere. It's an immersive way of learning about the culture and it's also a way of keeping it alive. The Tarahumara culture is one of the few in the north that's still very much alive. And I love the way that the whole state has embraced them. For example, do you remember that I mentioned before that here in, in Mexico, in the schools, we organize like folkloric dances for parents and special dates like Mother's Day, Father's Day and stuff like that. I just realized that there is one Tarahumara dance that they do sometimes in these festivals, which is the Tutuguri dance. It is actually a ceremonial dance that the Tarahumara people perform during a whole night to get a good harvest. Raramuri woman that has caught the attention of the, of the whole world, Maria Lorena Ramirez. She was born in 1995 in Huachochi, Chihuahua. She became famous because wearing her traditional clothing, very thin sandals with the soles made of tire, she won in April 2017 the first place of the Ultra Trail Cerro Rojo Marathon in Puebla. There were 500 participants from many different countries and she, without any special equipment and with the sole training of her everyday life in the Sierra Tarahumara, she won the Cerro Rojo Ultra Trail, which is an ultra-distance race of 50 kilometers in an impressive time of 7 hours and 20 minutes. But that was not her only accomplishment. She also won the same year the Barrancas del Cobre Marathon, a 100-kilometer race. She also won the third place on the senior category in Cajamar Tenerife's Blue Trail, which is a 100-kilometer race. I'm very excited to see which is the next marathon that she's going to be winning. We have another very famous sports-related person from Chihuahua, Jair Rodriguez. If you are a fan of the UFC, you might have heard his name. He currently holds the third place in the featherweight. During his career, he has been recognized as the match of the night three times and also as the performance of the night other three times. He is originally from the capital city, Chihuahua, Chihuahua, and he for sure is a great fighter. But you know, who else is a great fighter? Anthony Quinn, who was also born in Chihuahua, Chihuahua, but in 1915, and he passed away in 2001. He was an actor, director, 
and later writer and a sculptor. During his career, he fought a lot to get the recognition that he needed. For several years, he only got secondary roles, although he was doing them perfectly. Proof of that is that he won twice an Oscar for Best Supporting Actor. The first one was for Viva Zapata, and the second time was for Lost of Life. And let me tell you, in that movie, he only appeared for eight minutes. Later on, after his 40s, he got a better recognition for his work and he started to get protagonic roles. Some of his most famous movies are The 25th Hour, Guns of San Sebastian, The Shoes of the Fisherman, and The Secret of Santa Vittoria. Chihuahua is full of very talented people. We also have a tall, strong, and beautiful woman with a very powerful voice. Lucha Villa. She was born in 1936 in Camargo, Chihuahua. She was a ranchera singer and she also did a, a few movies. She started her career in 1961 and she became the queen of the palenques. She was the first one to start singing from the ring instead of from the balcony. The people loved it. As I already said, she was very tall, 1 meter and 75, which is why she was known as La Grandota de Camargo, the big one from Camargo and her very particularly deep and raspy voice was also something that made her quite famous. That's why she was also known as La Ronca de Chihuahua, the horse voice of Chihuahua. She retired in 1997 due to some serious medical issues. And the last famous people that I want to tell you about is Ignacio Anaya Garcia. He was a chef born in 1895 in Manuel Benavides, Chihuahua, and he died in 1975. You might be wondering why I'm telling you about a chef that was born so long ago. That's because in 1943, he created the very famous nachos. <laughs> Nacho is the short version of Ignacio, the way that family and friends will call them. So he had his own restaurant, and the story says that very late at night, very close to the closing time, a group of ladies arrived to the restaurant and asked for something to eat. He didn't have many ingredients, so he was forced to improvise. He took some tortillas cut in triangles, put them inside of the oven with some cheese, and then added some jalapeño slices and served it to the ladies as a very improvised snack, and it was a hit. So when the ladies asked what is the name of this dish, he said, nachos are special. <laughs> and that's how the nachos came to be. And speaking about food, this time we're not gonna be waiting for the end of the video so that we can talk about it. You already know how much I love talking about food. <laughs> so we're gonna continue with that. In the whole north of Mexico, it's very popular to eat grilled meat in different styles and cuts and shapes, and it's very hard to know exactly where it started, so I won't be mentioning that in any particular video. But you should know that if you go to any of the northern states in Mexico, you will find great quality of meat everywhere. Now, with that said, in Chihuahua we have a particularly good dish that you should try, tacos de discada. It was originally prepared on plowing blades that were no longer in use, so they will use it as a wok kind of thing <laughs> and cook the meat right on it. For these delicious tacos you will need meat and bacon diced, some chorizo, jalapeño chilies, onions, tomato, garlic, salt and pepper. You will prepare them in this huge plowing disc and when it's done you only need some corn tortillas to put this preparation and eat it directly. It is something very popular in family reunions and friends parties and whenever you have this cada you will for sure have montados which is another kind of tacos. You will get this time a flour tortilla, you will have some fried beans, some asadero cheese, a particular cheese that you will find very commonly in the north, and then you will add whatever kind of preparations to that you want. Fold it, put it on a pan, and they are ready to go. Speaking about cheese, there is one particular kind of cheese that is very famous from there, queso chihuahua. At least that's how we know it here in Mexico. It is a particular cheddar or Swiss cheese that the Mennonite community from Chihuahua produces there. So basically it's not exactly Mexican because it is made by Mennonites, but it is made with Mexican ingredients in Mexican soil. <laughs> 
and surrounded by Mexican culture, and for sure is eaten mostly by Mexicans. So we love it and we have taken it, as Mexican, of course. It is a semi-hard paste of cheese that has a yellowish color and is usually presented in a cylindric flat shape or a rectangular bar. So although Chihuahua is not surrounded by the ocean and it doesn't have any kind of coastal areas, one very popular dish is made with fish, caldo de oso, and it has a very fun story. Back when they were constructing the dam La Boquilla, the construction workers were having more often that, would, that they would like it as stew made with catfish. They were so fed up with that that they started calling it caldo odioso, hateful broth. <laughs> and from caldo odioso, at some point, it changed to caldo de oso, bear's broth. Just a little word game. <laughs> this broth is made with catfish that is first lightly fried with butter in a big pan. You will remove the fish and use that same butter to fry tomato, onion, green onion, and garlic. After that, you will add some carrots and potatoes, add some water, and once it's boiling, you will add back the fish and let it boil a little bit longer. It's a very simple and delicious soup. Although, apparently for some, after eating it for several days in a row, it can be tedious. <laughs> now we're going to be visiting the natural beauties of this huge state. I'm going to be starting with the highest permanent waterfall of the country. With 245 meters tall, we have the Basasiachi Waterfall. Impressive, beautiful, huge, and you can enjoy it the whole year, not only during the rainy season, which I think is just perfect. And going from water to rock, we are going to Peñoles, a place that is ideal for practicing boulder. Have you seen those guys that look like they have spider hands? That's bouldering. And Peñoles is a perfect place for practice. Before I say goodbye, I would like to tell you about a place that seems to be taken out of a sci-fi movie, to be taken from the wildest dreams you have ever had, La Cueva de los Cristales en Naica, Naica's Crystal Cave. Back in the year 2000, a group of miners that were working in the Naica mines discovered this incredible cave 300 meters down. It's a fantastic cave that is filled up with the biggest selenite crystals that anyone has ever seen, with the biggest being 12 meters long, 4 meters wide, and weighing several tons. The place is incredible because these crystals are believed to be 500,000 years old. They have been studied by NASA intensively, although the efforts of studying them is not been easy. The cave usually has a temperature of 45 plus Celsius degrees with a 90 to 100 percent of humidity. The place is so hot, the air is so dense and so hot with the humidity that you cannot stay in there longer than 10 minutes or you can literally die. So NASA has come up with these special suits that will cool you down so that you can stay in there for a little longer. But still, it's no longer than 45 minutes. And that's also why it is not open to the public, because it's actually quite dangerous. The crystals are sharp and slippery, and the temperature can kill you very easily. But we can enjoy the images from the videos of a few lucky reporters and also the scientist has shared with us. I still have one more secret to share with you, but before, make sure to give this video a big thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. And don't forget to click on the bell to get notifications from, for all my videos. Independence Day is coming and I'm planning something very special for you guys. Stay tuned. So before I say goodbye, let me give you a little piece of information that this crazy, magical cave has given us and will keep you thinking. In 2017, the NASA declared that they found inside of the crystals prehistorical microbes. 
Anyway, I hope that you have enjoyed this video and the next state for the Mexico piece by piece series is gonna be the place where I was born, Mexico City. Thank you for watching this video and see you next week. Bye!